have a problem. So it's to find an area between a region or between curves. Uh, so let's find the area of the triangular, and notice it's in quotes there, uh, region in the first quadrant bounded on the left by the y-axis and on the right by the curves y equals sine of x and y equals cosine of x. And I've uh, graphed those here for you. And I've actually blown it up quite a bit. So uh, if you know anything uh, about the sine of x, you know that this is the purple curve is the sine of x, y equals sine of x. And the orange curve here is uh, y equals cosine of x. Um, and uh, the blue line here is, of course, the y-axis. So I will shade the region, or fill the region, rather, with, uh, let's see what color. Let's pick a light color. Let's pick this green. This is the region we're looking for. Notice it's on the left by the y-axis and on the right by the curves. And I guess that's kind of somewhat triangular. It's not as triangular as this region, but <laughs> it's still triangular. And um, that's good enough for us. So that's this is the region we're going to integrate over. And uh, luckily for us, if we take a, uh, I just noticed something that makes this lucky. So I'll make myself a little straight line here and kind of show you something why I said we're lucky here. Uh, when we evaluate this integral, notice if I pass a vertical line through the region, the uh, top and bottom or the upper and lower boundary of the uh, or function that make the create the boundary of the region never changes. The top boundary is always uh, the cosine of x, y equals cosine of x, and the bottom boundary is always y equals the sine of x. Whereas if I rotate this and take a horizontal bar and pass it through the region, notice it's pretty good. I have a, I have a left uh, boundary stays the same the whole time, but right here at y equals, I don't know what yet. Actually, I do, but that doesn't matter. Um, it, my uh, right boundary changes. It changes from uh, y equals co uh, cosine of x to y equals the sine of x, or if you want to go up. So anyway, we're going to, of course, do it the easier way rather than the more difficult way. And integrate this way. So our, and remember uh, when we find the area of a region bounded by two curves, we, <clears throat> when, when our typical rectangle or our bar is vertical, I don't, I don't know how, what kind of mnemonic device you use to, uh, to think of that. I just think if I'm integrating with respect to X first, then I'm uh, taking my top curve and subtracting my bottom curve or the, the curve that creates the top boundary and subtracting the curve that creates my bottom boundary and integrating from the leftmost x-coordinate to the rightmost x-coordinate of the region. Um, so that said, we will evaluate that integral and I will get a black marker. So we are integrating with respect to x first and we'll leave that for a minute. Our top curve is uh, the cosine of x our bottom curve is the sine of x, and then of course dx. So now to find our, our x limits of integration. Well, the first point of on the x-axis that we enter the region is of course x equals zero, because it's the y-axis. And the uh, x-coordinate right here, I uh, thought about putting this in terms of pi, but I, I left it uh, uh, blank for a reason. So uh, basically, I mean, I guess you could say the cosine of x equals the sine of x and then solve for x. I just reason, I mean, what is the, we're in the first quadrant, what, where, what is the point where the cosine of x and the sine of x equal, equal each other in the first quadrant? And hopefully you know that is when x equals pi over 4 in the first pod quadrant. Um, so that's our upper x limit. Uh, use your unit circle or whatever. I, uh, honestly, I use little triangles. But anyway, uh, so that's it. Uh, we have uh, the definite integral from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 4, the cosine of x minus the sine of x dx. So we'll just integrate the uh, function whose derivative is the cosine of x is the sine of x. 
the uh, function whose derivative is the negative cosine of a, uh, sine of x is the positive cosine of x. Or we could look at it, the, the function whose derivative is the sine of x is the negative cosine of x times this negative 1 is a positive cosine of x. I kind of think those problems long enough uh, not to mess with that. So uh, now we're just going to go for it. So we have, um, we're going to evaluate at the top limit of integration and subtract the function uh, evaluate at the lower limit of integration. So we have the sine of pi over 4 uh, plus the cosine of pi over 4. And whatever they are, they're going to be equal. Uh, minus the sine, let me put some parentheses, uh, of 0. Oh, hopefully, hopefully you know is 0 plus the cosine of 0, which hopefully you know is 1. Um, the sine of pi over 4, <coughs> excuse me, is going is going to be uh, 1 over root 2, or uh, was it root 2 over 2? Some people, I, I just like 1 over root 2. Uh, of course, the cosine is the same thing, it's 1 over root 2. Uh, minus the sine of 0 is 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1, so minus 1. So we end up having uh, 2 over root 2 minus 1. And I guess if you really, 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 I don't know. I, I kind of think that that's good enough. If you want to get a common denominator and rationalize the denominator, you know, go for it. Um, actually, yeah, you should, because this, uh, this is actually root 2 minus 1. And that, that's a little bit easier to look at. Now that I think about it, just a little bit of work in my head. If I rationalize this denominator, I get uh, 2 times root 2 over 2, which is just root 2 minus 1, and that is easier to look at. So we will uh, leave it at that, and I'll even erase this box here. Although, I don't know, that's... I don't know that that's really a bad answer there. It's, you still can't get a, num a single number. You still have to write it as that, so but, oh well. I'll quit babbling.